The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Welcome, guys, and happy Wednesday. We are going to be talking about potty training today, and we're very excited about that topic. I can't wait. Potty we have training. potty trained a lot of we, dogs over the years. we've dealt with a lot of pee and poop over the years. That is true. That. Scott wants to break it down into three categories. We'll see how we stay on track. But first, we're going to start with the quirky tip of the day. <laughs> And, and Scott a- asked why this was up here. Why, how do I use this? I feel like I use this on everything. Uh, scratches, abrasions, yes. things like This is like uh, Vetresin. You can get it at um, Petco or PetSmart sometimes. They sell it at the local Agway in uh, Maine where we live. But uh, you can also get it on Amazon. Um, but Vetresin Plus, it's like an antimicrobial wound and skin. I like the spray stuff the most. And it's just anytime there's something going on, we just spritz it right on. Colloidal silver, I like. Yeah, also. we like Those that too. That was ones. a quirky tip, though, <clears throat> a few years ago. And I don't know if I put this product in our um, home years remedies. Ago. How long We've been, been at here? this for a while. I feel like it's been like 20 years. <laughs> um, I don't know if I put this in our Home Remedies podcast, but Vetresin Plus is the quirky tip of the day. Good to have around the house and pretty super safe to use. All right, so potty training. Scott wanted to do puppies, rescue dogs, and troubleshooting, but really puppies and rescue dogs kind of fall into the same category. Yeah, I would approach uh, potty training a rescue dog the same way as a puppy. It's just that the whole thing may advance very quickly within a week. You got a, you got a dog that doesn't need those things. But I would rather be proactive than going around picking up and finding puddles around the house. And yeah, like and that. that is one thing we should say is if you do rescue a dog and they say, oh, the dog's potty trained, mm-hmm. in a shelter type of situation, yeah. they're the dog They're going to never... tell you everything as well, long as you take the damn dog. But the dog. dog isn't in like a home, you know what I mean? They're not in a home with carpet and all this right. other stuff. So if you are bringing a rescue dog home or a puppy for that matter, we would recommend getting a crate first and foremost. Yeah, or at, at the very least, have a mud room or have it in the kitchen with some gates up so yeah. that you just don't have the dog all over the house and making accidents. All right, so walk them through what your process would be. I feel like Scott probably well, hasn't potty trained a dog in 10 years since I've been around. So it's, what been, would your, it's been quite a while. What would your go-to yeah, process be? And I don't look be? forward to doing it again in the near future. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pain in the ass. And I tell all my clients that the nice thing about dogs is that they grow up really quick. So... As difficult as it may be that first year having a puppy as it becomes a young dog, the, a year goes very quickly. So just do, suck it up and do what needs to be done because then you're going to have hopefully, you know, 15 more years of a nice, well-trained, you know, dog as far as being housebroken, you know. All right. So what's your process the first year? I'm a big proponent of the crate training. I've never uh, housebroken a dog without the use of a crate. And so it hasn't been a big deal. You know, I've had... You know, a lot of people, they don't like the crate because the dog whines, barks, kicks and screams and whatnot. But that aside, um, I would be using a crate when I'm not able to supervise the dog and keep my eyes on the dog. Uh, I'd be regulating food and water intake. Mm -hmm. And I would not give free access to a young, you know, puppy that doesn't know any better, that may be just drinking. Well, whenever the puppy drinks, it's going to have to pee shortly afterwards. So if there's water yeah. down for the puppy all the time. So there's a lot of issues like that. Do you want me to go down through the whole process right up to a year? Or what are you thinking? No, I mean, that's just your general rule that you're yeah, regulating it, things. You're the creating puppy, the dog. You're as soon supervising as that the puppy, dog. Whenever that puppy comes out of the crate, it's right outside. Yeah. First thing. Uh, assuming the puppy's been in there, took a nap, they wake up, they're going to have to go. They're probably going to have to pee. So I take them out, they pee, then they can be in the house and... Uh, it's a pretty safe bet. You're not going to have any issues with them. And if for some reason the dog hasn't gone to the bathroom outside, rather than say, oh, I guess it didn't have to go. Let's give him some free time in the house. Then the dog would go back in the crate. And the reason for the crate and why the crate training method works so well with potty training is that the theory is, is that where the dog eats and the dog sleeps is in the same place where the dog would want to use the bathroom. So that's kind of how people like wrap their head around that. And it's been very successful for us. And We've for that had, reason, not to interrupt, yeah. but I will. Uh, a lot of people use a previous crate from an old dog yes. they had for their puppy training. Yes. And now that the crate is so big, way it's like big. a condo. Yeah, way too big. So the dog pees in the back and goes to the front or vice versa. They're able to pee and comfortably move away from it and lay down. Yeah, I would say when I raised Sink, which has been a while ago now, um, but there were like five different size crates that she grew up in. And 
you know, once she outgrew one, then we'd go up a size, but it wasn't like she went from a baby puppy crate to a great Dane size crate because when a dog's older and you want to crate them, fine, whatever size you want to give them, that's great. But as they are learning to regulate their bladders and their bowels and everything else, if they do have a ton of room, then now they can make this part the kitchen, this part the bedroom, and then that part the bathroom. They literally can do that within the crate. So yeah. that is a good point. Make and sure the crate to, is size appropriate. If you don't want to buy 15 crates like Jess, <laughs> uh, you can get the full-size wire crate that comes with that yeah. divider in it and make sure that the dog doesn't have access to that entire crate right away. And another big mistake that I've seen clients make is they, for some reason, they are compelled to put a lot of bedding in the crate. And the reason I don't like to do that with puppies is because when they pee, they don't pee a lot. They're very small. And if it gets pee, they pee on the blankets, people don't tend to notice it until the dog has peed on it five times. Now it's starting to really smell. Like they could pee on it in the middle of the night and it could dry up theoretically by the time you get out there in the morning. So you don't want to make it comfortable for them to pee on something that's absorbing moisture. I've seen yeah. people put puppy pads in the crate, and that's just kind of encouraging the puppy to pee in the crate because I think that there's some pheromones or something on those yeah. puppy pads that, that, that tell the puppy or the dog, hey, pee here, because that's what they want you to do. You know. And it's not that you can never have pads or bedding or anything for puppies or rescues, but at least that early you know, intro time, maybe let's say the first two weeks to a month, just see what you have. And the other problem with bedding a lot of times is that dogs can dig it, dogs can chew it, dogs can ingest it. And that is a really key component that we are going to touch on a little bit here is that potty training isn't necessarily just like getting a dog to get to the point where they can regulate when they have to go to the bathroom and that they always do it outside. There's an anxiety component to pottying sometimes. There's behavioral so components to potty up training. anxiety on the Stamp Podcast? It happens this be the a lot. anxiety podcast. Brenda That's Aloff is about. my big go-to and she says that 99% <clears throat> of all dog problems problems are anxiety at this point. And I agree. I, I a hundred percent agree okay. that our behavioral problems and everything else we're getting our anxiety. And I, of course, puppies have to pee, but if a dog's sitting there all day, whining back and forth, standing up while you're gone, never sleeps, then the dog is going to pee more frequently when you're away rather than take a nap and wake up when you get home. So it's just important to note that it's not always like, oh, the dog should be able to hold it now. Why doesn't he? There can be some underlying reasons that peeing and pooping occur. There can be, but I would just, I'd like to assume that puppies are kind of a blank slate and they haven't been mentally disturbed by their owners <laughs> yet. So I'm talking, well, we about, a- I'm talking about just kind of a your normal puppy that just like a kid that, you know, the kids, they're, they're in, in diapers up until they can actually go let their parent know that they have to go to the bathroom and pee in this well, your youngest toilet. is 21. Kids aren't as normal as they used to be. And I don't well, know if puppies are as normal as they used to be. He may not be out of diapers yet, but he's close. 21-year-old <laughs> oh. is your daughter, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. Um, okay. So, no, this is important. I don't care if Scott cares about it or not. We had a dog that he was a terrier. He would literally behaviorally potty. He would could be on a bed in our facility. And if we brought another dog out to work another dog, he would pee on the bed in front of us. He'd stay on the bed, but he'd pee on the bed. So sometimes if you are experiencing these types of things or like, you know, you come home and you ignore the dog, the dog may like scurry behind the couch to pee just to get your attention. So be conscientious of behavior also. These are the categories I want to talk about. Now you're getting into troubleshooting. Oh, okay. I'm talking about puppy training. uh, Let's just assume we have a normal puppy here for people because most people start with a normal puppy. And I just want you to know that if you are having potty trouble, and you have an adult dog out there, we're going to help you. It's and not we're going to go fault. through that too. The puppy needs medication. It, it, no, it really, it, it it's not just as cut and dry as puppy training because we get a lot of adult dogs in with potty training issues. Small dogs are a freaking pain in the ass to potty train. I have a three pound Pomeranian. Not easy to deal with pottying with Pomeranians. Go back to yeah. your puppy stuff if you want to, if you feel like I'm jumping all over. No, I just think that uh, be proactive. I say this with in almost every yeah. situation with a puppy, a, an adult dog, any type of behavioral problems. Rather than wait and react to the problem, set the dog's life up and your life up so that you are taking steps to prevent those problems from happening. It's much more difficult to train a dog not to pee in your house when they've been doing it for six months or a year. It's a habit now. That you they're gotta, not going to just grow out of it if they're getting those repetitions. And you get that smell of the urine in the floor. You want to uh, use a um, neutralizer to get that smell out. Yeah, if don't do- just wipe it and with a paper gonna, towel. And there's going to be accidents. So you want to use some vinegar, some type of solution that's going to cut through the enzymes. It'll cut through that urine smell because when they smell that, that makes them want to pee there again. And if you have multiple dogs in the house, then they're all going to start tip. They can 
start marking and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so, marking would probably go into that third category of problem behaviors too. It can. So the potty training stuff with puppies, they're out and about, they get out of the crate, they go out to potty. Um, if they need to potentially pee and poop, make sure that they do both of those things. You know when they're eating because they're on a scheduled feeding program. We would recommend feeding in a crate. So now you can see how much they're eating. They're in a crate. You know, it's very easy to tell. Take the bowl away after five minutes. If they've peed and pooped, give them some supervised house time. But that doesn't mean now that the puppy can be loose in the house for two hours because they have little baby bladders. They're probably going to have to go again. And when they are loose in the house, especially if you have other dogs, pick up that water bowl. Verify, you guys have seen her on the podcast. She's seven months now. I'm raising her for our breeder. She literally still gets her water measured every single day. Like this is a thing that we do and that we believe in. Like you obviously as the dog grows up and the weather gets hotter and everything else, they may get more or less depending on what's going on, but literally measure the water and know how much the dog is drinking per day to really get your potty training locked in. I think the larger the breed, the easier also. They have better bladder control. They don't need to be rushed out as often as a smaller structured dog potentially and some dogs just don't mind being messy i mean that really is that's like a, that's another some, issue but some that's dogs a small are gross, issue but you you need to make sure that you are being an advocate for the dog and you know mm. sometimes it's some places now are letting you stay home the first seven days you have a puppy if you need to have somebody come in and let the dog out friends family dog walkers whatever make sure the dog's getting out frequently enough so you're not getting a lot of reps of accidents especially within the crate I think that was part of uh, Biden's new budget that he was releasing that everyone could stay home with their puppies. We're not going to talk um, about the budget. Another thing about, you know, she talked about picking up that water. Uh, quite often I'll go to someone's home that's having trouble and there's a big bowl of food sitting on the floor. Yeah. Like they're just, they give the dog the breakfast, but they, and I say, well, when do you feed the puppy? Well, we do breakfast and dinner. Or we do breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a very young puppy. But the dog isn't finishing the breakfast. So this food, they are right up until they just add another scoop at noon. And then they add another scoop at... Uh, and you don't know when the dog is eating how much. And yeah, you never know anything. That's going to affect when it has to poop, when it has to do things and everything else. And that's the whole point. Like, really, for puppies especially, I do raw with our puppies, and that's pretty easy. Like, I have three poops a day. It's pretty simple. Kibble-fed puppies go to the bathroom a lot more. But um, if you know when the puppy ate and the puppy pooped, if you're doing some training and stuff, that's fine, but it's not like a big meal again is going into the dog. So regulating that food and water, using the crate, and then supervising. Supervising out in the yard, supervising in the house. You made a good point of watching the dog. Like do yeah. Puppies do certain behaviors when they they're definitely, loose. Dogs will definitely uh, give you behavioral cues yeah. when they need to pee. Uh, I remember the first dog I had would just start. And here's the thing. I mean, I guess this is the, having a little bit of dog sense, a little bit of intuitive understanding but I had this puppy that all of a sudden stopped what it was doing and just started walking around the edge of the room. And I knew right away, the puppy's looking mm -hmm. for a place to pee. I just scooped him up, brought him some outside, dogs, they went to pee. Some dogs circle, some dogs sniff, whatever it's going to be. But you need to be the precursor for, oh, that's a sign that the dog might have to go potty. I'm going to sweep it up and bring it out. Okay, we're going to go oh. to break. Oh, I, you want you you go another to break, one? Hang oh, on. my gosh. Here There's we one go. last thing I just uh, thought about. When you see the dog... Um, doing this behavior, or if they just all of a sudden start peeing right in front of you, and I've seen this repeatedly with people, they just look at the dog <laughs> peeing. The dog is peeing indoors right in front of them, and they just stay, like, people have come into our facility with a dog on a leash. The dog starts peeing, and I'll say, hey, the dog's peeing on the leash. Hey, get, get your dog. And they look, and I say, you know, and they didn't want to interrupt the dog while the dog's peeing. Interrupt the behavior. Yes. I'm not don't, saying that you've got to freak the dog out, yeah, but you're not get the correct. dog out. But yes, get if you see peeing indoors, move the dog outdoors, yeah, even if it's a, close to I being I was at a house the other night. This little toy dog jumped on this lady's lap in her easy chair and started peeing. And she said, the dog's peeing. The dog's <laughs> peeing. Well, get up and get the dog outside, you know? Take action on that when note, you see it. Why don't we take a quick break? All right. You're just controlling break now. Sounds good. Does your dog lack self-control? Are you looking for some answers? Would you like your dog to be calmer? Does your dog lack confidence? Canine MindShift. Enroll in a free course today. Simply go to caninemindshift.com. That's caninemindshift.com. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to talk about a few things um, that we don't like. I know you're supposed to promote the things you love rather than bash the things you hate, but let's bash a few things here. Pee pads. We don't like pee pads. 
I'm not a big proponent of pee pads no, myself. We don't, we don't like pee pads. I think they're there to encourage dogs to pee on them. Whether you have a but little dog. I have a pee dog. pad story when you're done with that. It was just the last pee pod in the house. You can tell it if you want. I feel like this What's is that? the third Which time around you told it about the lady that had them all over her yeah, kitchen. Yeah, they were all... Well, the dog would pee right beside the pee pad. <laughs> so she'd had two pee pads. And by the time I got to the house, they were going up, down, through the hallway, a different bed. There's pee pads over the entire house. And if you listen to the podcast often, I, we need to start counting how many times you told that story. For all of you that, that this is your first visit, <laughs> pee pads, pee pads everywhere. A lot of uh, people will be proponents of it's a little dog, it's the winter, pee pads are important. Ideally, if you are getting a little dog and you do live in a climate that has a winter, maybe try to time the breeding better. It is a harder time to potty train puppies in the winter. But pee pads do not set you up for success in any way, shape, or form. They teach the dog that going to the bathroom in the house is okay. And not only that going to the bathroom in the house is okay, but that mommy and daddy are going to be like, oh, good boy, you did the right thing. Pee pads can turn into peeing on carpets, peeing on little area rugs and everything else. So if your breeder used them, that's great. Ditch them as soon as the puppy gets it's home. Pee pads are a marketing thing. We are not a big proponent of pee pads unless you have like a really old dog that's incontinent and you're trying to save your house. Like that's the only time I would say, fine, you got an old dog that needs help. Use pee pads. Otherwise, pee pads are not a good go-to. One thing I will say about peeing indoors, um, because I have seen, uh, not as much anymore, but a while ago, they were maybe several years ago, it seemed to be this, this new thing that I was running into more and more was a it was like a tray with the artificial yeah, grass in it. a lot it, of people have this. And it, and it had like a drain system, so the pee would go through into a... You could pull out the bottom and empty it. And I suppose that would work. We did that for one client. It was very um, difficult. They were on lived, a boat. They had a dog on a boat. Who lived in Revere. No, I wasn't thinking Oh, there was another one. Yeah, there was one little guy that a dog, a guy had a little dog and he wanted that method and we did it for one client and it did work out okay for them, but that's the same thing. The turf yeah. is the same thing as the pee pads. Well, so. what I wanted to say about that is dogs are not naturally as clean or, or as conscientious as a cat. Cats will gravitate to the to their cat, uh, whatever it's litter called, box. litter box. And dogs don't really give a shit for the most part to be, I mean, if you bring the dog to that thing and put them in there, they'll go. But if they don't feel like walking all the way over, half the times they'll go somewhere else, you know? Yeah. So I just had trouble with general, it. In general, in general, we would say no to the pee pads, no to the turf, everything else. Some people live in a condo. They never a high leave. Rise or they something. never leave and it works for them with the little dog. If it works, great. Fine. That's fine. That well, would that, not be our go-to way for potty training. That would bring me to the playpen method too. I know. I want to talk, talk about more things that we don't like. What do like. you want to talk about? Oh, okay. this is it. So things we, we talked don't like. about... Um, Scott said before the break, as far as like, if you see the puppy peeing, interrupt the behavior. Yes. So many people are like correct pottying or if the dog potty go and rub his face in it and we were talking about that on the way over like that is an old wise tale some like older vets will still tell you to do that that it's over like it happened the dog doesn't know what's going on and correcting the dog for going isn't necessarily going to help either you need to just interrupt the behavior be proactive like scott said and make sure your supervision is very vigilant if you have not seen the dog go and then you find a spot retracing the steps and going back to that is not helping you or the dog or the process in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I, I can't say it doesn't work. I've never done it and I wouldn't do it because it just seems to be after the fact that the dog is not going to put it together. But I think my dad did that, did that when I was a little kid, the dog peed on the floor and my dog, my, my dad took the puppy and rubbed his nose in it. And I've had vets, old school vets say they've done that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, but it's kind of, I'm not saying it's uh, an old wives tale, but there's it's much better ways of recommend. doing it. You don't need to, you know, damage your relationship with yeah. your puppy it's not by taking them and rub, rubbing their face into so the dirt. So if you've heard of that or you read that, don't do it. Another thing we don't like, bells. The bell situation oh, is ha like... hanging bells on your door. Yeah, like, oh, the dog will tell me when to go. Like, no, this is... It's similar, like, when you're potty training kids. Like, no, you're going to be the advocate of, like, hey, it's been X amount of time. Why don't you go to the bathroom? Dogs getting to the point where they regulate their own bladders. And I was thinking about this with our dogs. Even when our adult dogs are loose... They're not going to the door and being like, I have to go to the bathroom. They're on a schedule with us and we let them out a certain time. They're never telling us like, oh, I got to go or oh, something's happening. Maybe if their stomach's upset or whatever, there's something going on. They have to race out and, you know, have diarrhea or something that maybe happens like once every two years. But in general, the dogs are not regular telling us, oh, it's my time to go. We're the ones like scheduling their lives and making sure that they go. And if yeah. they have to go great, they don't <clears> go <throat> fine. They can hold it. But yeah, and the dogs get a lot of free time. It's just that like when we first when we get home like right now from the podcast, we're going to let all the dogs out to no. go potty, you know, and they're not all in crates and they're not peeing on the floor. Yeah. But after they've gone out, we know they're going to be fine in the house yeah, for, for quite a while. Of time. Yeah. It's not going to be an issue. 
Um, so the bell thing, it's another thing that you're rewarding, right? Like, oh, good boy, you hit the bell. And Scott always says, like, the, the more the dog likes to go outside, the more the dog rings the bell. Like, you become like the dog's servant. Like, okay, I want to go and, you know, I need to get out there. Not dog doesn't pee, even go outside. Dog's chasing squirrels, whatever, barks to come in, goes back out. The bell thing, I, not something we like either. Not a method that we would promote. Um, well, we, I'll just say that I've worked with, may, I've gone to many homes where they've already had the bells in place. They don't work. So yeah. I, I'm sure there are people out there that have dogs that ring the bell to go out to potty and they come in and that's all great. I've just not seen it it's myself. Not, I, it isn't something I would recommend implementing in the learning phases. This Especially isn't a good if you teach it with food. If you teach yeah. a dog to ring the, go hit the bell and give them a treat, then they're going to be hitting that bell constantly to get yeah. treats from you. So uh, we talked about the crate earlier. Scott's mentioning a playpen too. And as much as you said dogs don't like litter boxes, you were talking about how um, our breeder raises puppies and she does have the puppies going separate from where they sleep pretty early on. So like there's a bin with, you know, pellets or something like that in it. Um, and the puppies are actually leaving where they sleep and learning to go and potty in a separate area. If that's the way that your breeder did things and Scott made this point also, if you are getting the dog from a breeder, know what was happening the first yeah. eight to 10 weeks of the puppy's life, like ask them what was going on. Maybe they did nothing and that's fine. But if the dog has already started a process like that, you could now have the dog live in a playpen maybe instead of a crate with a potty box in the playpen. So are they going to the bathroom in the house? Yes, but it's a separate surface than anything they're ever going to see. Most people don't have just pellets laying around their house and you're transitioning that then to a yard. So that is another thought process, another way to go. You talked a lot about mudroom potty training. I don't know well, what Well, I think happens. the reason, getting back to the playpen, the reason that that works is because it's such a small area that they're either in their area where they sleep yeah. or, and then there's the area where they eat, and then there's a big area where they can pee and poop, and they don't want to pee and poop where they're eating and sleeping, so they just gravitate towards this other area where you could put pee pads in that case. And if it was a... I still wouldn't use pee pads there. You can if use it a was box a toy with dog, other surfaces. If, if you have a, a toy breed, and you need to be at work for eight hours, yeah. and you, that then could be that your would be a plan. very conceivable layout yeah. for, a, for a dog. That would have. be a full-term, that could be your long-term plan. If, yeah. Some little dogs yeah. are tricky, 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 tricky. Um, what was your mudroom thing? Because you well, talked I think about a lot of people, and playpens. A lot of people um, have successfully housebroken dogs without using crates for years. And when I was a kid, we didn't have a crate. And uh, none of my friends had crates with their dogs. We're talking about in the 60s. And crating just wasn't even something people thought about. I don't remember ever seeing a crate until I was an adult. And um, you'd confine the amount of space the dog had. You still have to be conscious of water and food and whatnot. And there's going to be mistakes. Even when you're crating, there's going to be mistakes in the house. You just want to minimize them as much as possible. Yeah, repetition you know, builds behavior. I think Jess is, when we got this puppy that Jess has now, the first month that we had that puppy, maybe it had one mistake. I can't remember. It was yeah. almost a perfect, you know, Jess is trying to go for perfection. And most people are not that crazy. But... With love the you, amount I of attention, too, well, the amount of attention you it gave the puppy, it makes good dog trainers. She, the dog wasn't retention. peeing in the house. I mean, yeah. and there was just you know once in a while there'd be like a little mistake. Not Repetition a big deal. builds behavior. So if you want to limit those reps, it's really important to set the dog up on a proper schedule and everything else. I want to talk about a few things that we would recommend using um, for troubleshooting, and then um, just some random oddball things because potty training comes in all shapes and sizes. We've done this for the quirky tip. If your dog will not poop outside and only poops in the crate, you can consider using a Q-tip just to get the behavior of pooping outside. A lot of praise, a lot of everything else. That's not a long-term plan. You can Google it. You can YouTube it. Q-tipping is not crazy. You lick the end of the Q-tip. You put it up there. It stimulates the dog to go. That is something you can do if you have a pooping-specific issue because some dogs like really don't like to poop outside, and then they come in, they have no problem pooping right in their crate or right in their kitchen. So that's one thing we would recommend. Um, if you have marking, Scott mentioned marking, males that stay intact, maybe they just behaviorally mark. That's they, something I would correct. They sell, I would get run you, up their you ass. can, and it, and it works for some dogs, it doesn't for others, but they sell actual belly bands. Um, yeah. We honestly had a boxer one time that had such severe pottying that he lived in our um, training area for two weeks in a belly band. And then I had to cone him on top of the belly band because he would actually turn and go to eat that off. And I got on top of his potty training with it, it but that was, it was too, a think, huge anxiety case yeah. of pottying. But that was how extreme it was. If you just have behavioral marking in the house and you want your dog out, a belly band one is gonna prohibit that like freedom. And two, if the dog does pee, all of a sudden they're peeing and now they're wet. So yeah. a belly band is a tool that if you 
have not used it before, you should certainly um, consider it. it. And yeah. I want to say this randomly, too, because that boxer specifically that we had, when he was having all these issues, I always bring in a urine, like especially if it's an older dog, a urine or a fecal, a urinalysis or a fecal. Like if there's something going on and it kind of seems out of left field, rule out behavioral or rule out medical stuff before you turn it into behavior. Don't try to troubleshoot it yourself. If puppies, Jimmy, when he was a puppy, pooped in the crate like three times, not normal Jimmy stuff. He had Giardia. He went through a phase at about four or five months old that he was eating dirt and he loved all that kind of stuff. There was a reason why that happened. There was a huge behavior change. The dog never pooped in his crate and then he did it three times in 24 hours. So first and foremost, if something kind of pops up out of the blue, take a sample of urine, take a sample of the poop and bring it to the vet and make sure everything's clear. That would be a big go-to of mine. Another thing I would say, um, aside from a medical issue, is letting the dog out is not enough. You have to go out yeah. with the dog and watch, watch them the pee yes. and watch them poop. And for that matter, take it a step further and look at their poop. Go pick it up. Mm-hmm. And even if you're not going to pick it up, you're just going to be lazy and let your dog poop in the backyard and you're going to pick it up once a week or at whatever. Least see what it go looks like. Go see what's going on with the yeah. poop because it could be telling you that the dog ate something for a foreign body. There could be some pieces of a toy in the poop. Especially if the stomach's there upset. There could be worms in the poop. Yeah. There could be any number of things. It could be very loose poop. The dog has diarrhea, which should tell you, oh, something's up with my dog. But if you just let them out, they may just go turn around, sit right at the door, waiting to come in and not actually go and do their business, especially if the weather sucks. Yeah. They don't want to go out That's in the pouring rain. It's another time to you supervise. You've got to get out, take them all the way out there, get your umbrella and suck it up and deal with this It's stuff, another time you know? to supervise. And if you have multiple dogs, let the puppy out alone because the puppy's just going to want to go out and play with the other dogs when it's out there. Another thing I'm a big proponent of um, is, especially when the puppies are young, when you're taking them out to potty, don't just always be in your yard. Have the dog on leash. Go to the front yard. Have the dog potty on mulch. Have the dog potty on gravel. To have your dog be able to go to the bathroom on different surfaces later in life when it's actually a command Very is really a nice skill to have. Yeah. There are so many adult dogs that don't even want to go to the bathroom on leash. So now if you're at a rest stop or something, they're like, I can't potty on leash. I can't get far enough away from you. I don't know what to do. If you're on a road trip and you're going to be in the car for eight hours, your dog's going to be uncomfortable. So teach these things early, whether it's a new rescue or it's a puppy. Get the dog used to that kind of thing. When I brought Verify home, it was February. There was snow everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, she's going to eat the snow and she's going to have too much water and she's not going to potty. I brought Vital out on a leash in the morning and I had her potty on the freaking water walkway and then I put a playpen around that and verify smelled hers and pottied over that but that's because I raised vital with that skill that was important to me so do that early do those things early two other things um, I want to bring up before I we mention close that snow is a big issue that yeah yes. a dog goes out and they may pee but if you let them go around eating snow because it's novel and it's cool and it tastes good whatever the reason now they're filling themselves back up with water to come back in the house yeah. and you're going to have an issue yeah so also, water and say, snow are the same in the summer which it's a, it's warm right now supposedly uh, so if in your theory, puppy, it should be. Your puppy's out running around having fun outside and getting hot. Then they come inside and drink a bunch of water because rightfully so, they're thirsty. You gotta, if, if you're going to have water outside when they're out playing, let them drink water outside. Pick up that water and then keep them outside and, you know, and watch them for another 15, 20 minutes before they come in because they're drinking water. It's yeah. in their system. Um, okay, so two other types of pottying that we haven't really talked about um, is... Like excitement, submissive peeing, and then like this behavioral potting that we're talking about. So and, and incontinence, I wanted to touch yes, on too. Yes, that's true. We were going to say that. So um, as far as the submissive peeing that like you see out of a puppy, a lot of times a younger female puppy or whatever, or you know when people get the dog excited when they meet someone new, try to have a more neutral exchange with new people when that happens. Like it's not that um, uh, submissive peeing is way different than potty training. The dog could just have peed outside successfully and then see somebody is like, oh my god can't hold it together. I have to pee. But limit, notice what those triggers are. Like it's when somebody has a high pitched voice, like I just had have people be more calm with the dog. Maybe just give the dog some food, try to get those reps lessened because if that just is something the dog is used to doing, it's a lot harder to break. And maybe you have that going on for like a year now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's a big one. Go ahead and a talk about it. male and female. Yeah, it, it's true. But if you're seeing that excitement, submissive peeing, try to figure out what those triggers are. And if it's you, just be more neutral with the dog when you first see the dog. Just walk up. Okay, let's go outside. And then give the dog a lot of love outside after it's potty. Yeah, and that is, that is a behavioral component. And I will just say in closing with that, that puppy that just went home that yes. we had. We had a dog. We went, it was, how old is that dog? Six, five, six, six months? months? Yeah. 
Anyway, when we got there, we pet the puppy, it starts peeing, peeing all over everyone. the floor. And they said this happens constantly. The kids come in and the dog is peeing everywhere. And it was a male. And we said, okay, well, we got to be careful with that. It didn't do it one time with but us. But it was how we were interacting with the, the dog. dog and, and also the dog mentally was so loose. Yes. Everything was overexcitement. Yes. Everything was overstimulating. And that was all yes. inadvertently when encouraged. The, when the structure came, that yeah. went away Then the quickly. dog got his head kind of cleared up and calmed down. And he never submissively peed. Even yeah. when he went home and the kids saw him and he was all excited to see the kids, he didn't pee. So it could have been that he was maturing physically. He started, you know, getting it together. But it stopped with the structure also. Yes. Uh, behavioral pottying is a big one. Uh, we talked about the Shorty, that the, is the, the worst. dog that did it on the bed when we were training other dogs. A lot of dogs will the, behaviorally potty in a crate when you leave because they're stressed. Think of getting a your bed. camera. Yeah, well, it, even where, wherever it's going to happen. Think of getting a camera in those instances and trying to kind of read the dog's behavior a little bit more. If it's something that happens when you leave the house, leave the house for five minutes rather than if it goes 15 minutes. If it happens right when you leave, like figure these things out. Try to dive into the reason that this is happening more so. If you've cleared out a medical thing and you have the dog on a good schedule, then your behavioral pottying, you have to look at with kind of a microscope and get deep in there. Even you could contact a professional. I would say most of the potty yeah. training we have <clears throat> it, as clients, it's behavioral pottying. And if you're going to rule out, you of course, ruling out there's a medical problem. One thing that we do is we cut way back on the water. Yeah. But we also make sure that they're not getting hot where they need a lot of water, too. Yeah. We're not going to be having them out in the sun and work the crap out of them and then not give them water where they're going to have a problem. Yeah. So we're not getting them overheated. We're keeping them comfortable in a, in a climate-controlled environment. But we're backing off on the water so we can get a handle on this potty yeah, training same stuff, thing with know? the food if the dog ha is okay on weight skip a meal and see if you can limit those reps of pooping in the crate and everything too just play around with different stuff but the behavioral potting is really tricky and if you have a rescue it may arrive with the behavioral potting so you need to get on top of that go ahead and talk about uh spay and continence real quick well it happened with mine uh, yeah. it happens first, with a lot of first dogs family dog we got in, was a um, an english mastiff and she was a beautiful dog she was like 45 pounds when we got her at at just 10, 12, three months or something like that. She was a big dog. And um, I wanted to wait until after she had been through a heat cycle, at least one before we got her spayed, because I had read that's the way you should do it. And that's what I wanted to do. And uh, of course, the heat cycles were <laughs> messy, to say the least, because she was at that point, a 120 pound dog at, a, at 11 months or so. So we got her spayed. And then she'd like be napping on the floor and get up, and there'd be like a wet spot there. She, was she wasn't she was peeing. She was leaking. And so. some dogs will fully relieve their bladder. Uh, my rat terrier, Bammer, was like that when she was asleep. She was spayed really, really early in a rescue, yeah. just like crazy early. Um, I and brought the she dog in. Said, well, completely my, pee. When I told the vet about this, he goes, oh, yeah, well, that's not uncommon yeah. with a spay. And I'm like, shit, if I knew that, I would have maybe not even spayed the yeah. dog because that was a lifelong issue, and we had her on medication for it. But keep in mind, medication for the next 10 years. Yeah, you know? and that is not potty training. So if you see the dog where they're sleeping and they leave a little mark or if they're totally relieving themselves while sleeping, that likely is spay incontinence. And it can happen in males too. It's not just a spaying thing. And there is medication for that. It used to happen to me when that. I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things used to happen to him when he was drinking. That's why he doesn't drink. But um, that, that is something that, again, we would recommend you go to the vet. So if you are having potty training issues and they're outside of the realm of anything that we discussed here and none of this helped, feel free to email us at studio at thecorkydog.com and we can see if we can give you some quick, easy advice. But we literally have seen hundreds of dogs over the years and a lot of them have had potty training issues. And I think that for the most part, we have a pretty high success rate. And it's not just because of our diligence. It's because sometimes you have to come at something from a totally different angle than you've ever had to do before. Like we're not, we don't feel like, oh, every dog we get in, we know what we're dealing with. We're learning as we go. So yeah, we've seen a lot of different variables all the time. and potty training sucks. Like it sucks to have to be cleaning up pee and poop indoors inside of a crate or wherever, rather than just picking it up in the yard. So and try to get on top of your issues ASAP. Yeah. And really, it's just that you have to give the dog the attention. And some people, yes. you know, when you get a puppy, it's a big commitment of you having to pay attention. And a lot of people are really kind of put out. They're like, you know, God damn it. I put the dog outside. I'm back to my conference call. And the, and the dog comes in and pees. Well, having a puppy means you go out 
and you don't do the conference call and you deal with this puppy. It's a big, it's a big commitment time wise and length of time too. I mean, it's 15 years. So well, the whole thing can be over really quick. Yeah. The sooner you you get it dialed in, the easier it'll be. All right. So we will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, again, if you need anything that we didn't cover, you know where to find us. And in the meantime, keep it quirky. Happy potty training. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.